Ian in Vienna writes to me, the heart of my system is a Magnat RV3. And I apologize, I know the brand Magnat, but I, I'm not familiar with those speakers. In any case, um, I also have an integrated hybrid which feeds the Magnat signature speakers. Um, Oh, I bet the Magnet RV3 is a piece of electronics. Anyway, he's got Magnet speakers and Magnet electronics. Um, and he says they're an obscure German manufacturer. Well, I've definitely heard of them. Anyway, it took me a long time to decide to commit to getting the subs, and I'm not sure on some of the finer points of setting them up. My ignorance lies with adjusting the crossover and the volume. The subs have three adjustments. Phase, I know how to use that, crossover, and volume. I have no clue as how to best adjust the crossover. Can you give your audience some pointers? Sure, we've, we've been through this before, but it's always good to repeat often asked questions because every time somebody like myself says and tries to go through it, I always say it a little bit differently. And maybe, maybe something will sink in each time, which would be delightful. Okay. The role of a subwoofer is to augment the main speakers. We don't want subs to be heard. You don't want to say, oh, there's bass coming out of that subwoofer. So that's the first thing that you have to remember. Subwoofers should not be heard. You want to have the sound coming from your sound stage that is behind the loudspeakers on the front wall and you want them to be full range. So part of the setup is going to be the setup of the main speakers and then where you place your chair. And once you get those things set up, then you're going to want to dial in the bass. And the best way to do that is with a subwoofer. And I've said that before. I, our FR30 loudspeakers go down easily down to 25 hertz, which is low enough for just about any kind of music or any person. But that doesn't mean that they do it right where you're sitting, okay? And so by taking a subwoofer or two, a stereo pair is always better, placing them in the appropriate place in the room to where that bass works flat and perfectly at your seat, that's the first step. The second step is to set the crossover. Now, Crossovers should be done by ear. And what I like to do is start low and start turning them up until you hear the sub and turn it back down to where you don't hear the sub. Okay? Now, by hearing the sub, I mean to where you could close your eyes and point to the sub. That's too high. Turn it down. Start at 30 hertz. Work your way up. Get a good, if you can, buy uh, the Octave Records um, the uh, Audiophiles Guide, the stereo. There's some great bass tracks. Um, there's an upcoming octave record that's called, that's part of our The Art of Hi-Fi series. And the first one we're producing is called Bass, just Bass. And there are some killer bass pieces on that. So get something that you can trust, like those octave recordings and start playing them. Turn the sub completely off, listen to it, then turn it on once you have it placed. And, and we've talked before how to place a sub. And once you get it in the right place for propagating flat sound at your listening position, and remember we can put the sub in the listening position and then walk around by the speakers to find the best spot, then reverse all of that. That's how you get there, okay. Now turn the crossover down and start turning it up, playing the same track over and over, whether it's our, our track on the original one with Chris Brunhaver doo -doo 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 -doo, up and down the bass notes, whatever it is, and get the most even smooth bass notes out of the main speakers. As soon as you turn it up too high in frequency, it's going to point itself to the sub. That's too high. Turn it down. For volume, you're going to have to just do that by ear. When a sub is properly set up to where it just sounds glorious. In my experience, it's not flat. In my experience, it has a nice bump. 
down in the low frequency that just gives a satisfying, oh, this is just right. And you'll know it when you hit it too much. And it just, you know, it's too much. So do that all by ear, both by ear. But get yourself a good reference record. And I'm going to give a plug here for Octave Records because we got some good stuff that you can use in the audio files guide. The audio files guide CDs, SACDs are, are the way to go. Okay. Good luck out there and uh, let me know how it goes.